हेलो गाइस दिस इज अदेप वेलकम टू माय चैनल मोमेंट साइंस वेयर आई सिंपलीफाई बायो मैकेनिक्स विद जो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द प्रिहेंशन सो अंडर प्रिहेंशन वी हैव द पावर ग्रिप एंड द प्रिसीजन हैंडलिंग इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन द पावर ग्रिप एंड अंडर पावर ग्रिप वी विल बी ओनली कवरिंग सिलेंड्रिकल ग्रिप व्हिच इज द मेजर चंक ऑफ द होल पार्ट एंड देन इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल कवर द स्फेरिकल हुक एंड लैटरल प्रिहेंशन अंडर दिस and then finally we will finish the whole hand biomechanics topic with the prehension handling okay so let's start with the power grip first thing that we need to know about power grip is what is it it is a forceful act resulting in flexion at all the fingers so whenever you are using all your fingers and with a lot of power that's what a power grip looks like so there are different types there is the cylindrical grip which looks something like this there is a hook grip which you uh, use in carrying a bag there is spherical grip which you will use to hold a ball and finally there is lateral prehension which can be used uh, to hold a paper or something like that between your two fingers so these are the major power grips now what is the difference between the power grip and the precision handling like holding a pen paper using your fingers to manipulate the object what's the difference the major difference so this can be seen over here there are steps for the prehension that is when you are using your hand there are four steps first is opening of the hand which is common for both of them then positioning the finger so if you are grabbing an object you are going towards the object and positioning the fingers so let's take this pen first is opening then positioning the fingers okay then next one is bringing the fingers to the object okay and then after this this is the last step that is different in your power versus precision that is maintaining a static phase or manipulating with hand so in power you will hold it and you'll just statically hold the whereas in the precision what you will do you will manipulate the object right you will move it in your hand using the fingers so that is the major difference between power and precision now let us look at the cylindrical grip so under the cylindrical grip there are ton of points to remember but i have tried to make it as simple as possible so you guys can understand the whole concept very easily so first thing is your flexor digitorum profundus activity is seen in the cylindrical grip that is the first thing and as the forces increases with increase in forces flexor digitorum superficialis activity is also seen apart from these two major extrinsic flexors there are the interossea that is the intrinsic muscles of the hand which play an equal role because there is mcp and ip flexion that is happening in your cylindrical grip correct see you can see mcp and ip flexion happening over here next thing that you need to know is these interossea they when they activate they can cause ulnar deviation at mcp these are your mcps right and there can be ulnar deviation at the mcp when your interossea activate and these forces of ulnar deviation are countered by different structures at mcp so now if you take my hand and when the interossea are working they will cause ulnar deviation right on the ulnar side there will be deviation that means there will be subluxating forces on all your fingers towards this side so, and this will be stabilized all the ulnar side forces will be stabilized by the radial side collateral ligament that is radial collateral ligament apart from that there are also the annular pulleys the sagittal band and the extensor digitorum the tendons all these structures passively provide stability to your mcp from the ulnar directed force that is caused by your interossea muscles next if we go to the thumb at the thumb in the cylindrical grip we see flexa pollicis longus and other thena muscle activity is present and this activity will vary with object and intensity that means if you are holding an object really hard the activity of thena and all the flexa pollicis longus muscles the it will be much higher compared to if you are holding an object at a way lesser intensity 
so that's something obvious but what we see is there is a correlation between your thenar and the hypothenar let's have a look at that so if you can see the hypothenar activity that is basically your opponents and flexor digiti minimi these two muscles it is seen that they are directly proportional to the thenar activity that is the opponents pollicis so basically what this means is the opponents of the little finger and opponents of the thumb it works together because you are holding something right and see both of them come together in a cylindrical grip so it is seen that their activity is directly proportional meaning if the activity of the hypothenar muscles increases the activity of the thenar muscles will also increase so that is another important fact that is seen in your cylindrical grip of hand now going on to some other facts first thing we need to know is there is ulnar deviation in your cylindrical grip and this ulnar deviation increases with heavy object apart from this this ulnar deviation also helps in supination and pronation and a best example of that would be a opening a door knob right when you go hold a door knob and then you are opening supination and pronation is much more easier in that cylindrical grip with ulnar deviation compared to a radial deviation it would be difficult correct that's how you can remember that supination pronation also plays a major role with that ulnar deviation in the cylindrical grip next thing that you need to know is the ring finger and the little finger these two fingers are more of mobile in your cylindrical grip they provide mobility with that ulnar movement ulnar side movement whereas index and middle finger they provide more of stability and they generate a lot of force in your cylindrical grip so another thing about the little finger is as the flexion reduces the force that you can generate is much more so if you are holding something really rounded where the flexion of the little finger is not that much the force that it can generate is much higher compared to something which is very uh, thin and you grab it and there is more flexion at the little finger but it cannot generate that much force one last thing i want to add about the ulnar deviation part of your cylindrical grip is during cylindrical grip as the ulnar deviation happens that means the flexor carpi ulnaris is active right and as that activates your transverse ligament over here at the carpal also gets taut because this flexor carpi ulnaris is attached to that and because it's taut this provides a stable base for your hypothenar muscles which are present over here right it provides a stable base for them to work more efficiently so that's how everything is kind of tied in together with creation of this stability with all the muscle activations so that is the last thing that we need to know in the cylindrical grasp so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching